Our first stop on the virtual field trip is Don Juan's, opened in 1966, located on 325 East Main Street. It is historical marker number 58 in Grand Prairie. You can probably tell by the age of the sign, but it's the same one since the day it opened. Not much has changed about the building except for a couple renovations. You can tell by these drawings made up by Don Chivario who opened the restaurant that there was a very different idea of what he wanted of the restaurant when he first decided to open it. He wanted to name it Carlitos. He wanted to make it much more longer and wider and had a much more open concept for the restaurant than what it actually has. It's a lot more cramped. There's boot booths. It's a little more smaller than he wanted. And we'll come back to that napkin holder in a second. When I started this, I actually found this brochure I made in fourth grade about Don Juan's that I will get back into a little bit more. And this was the back photo. And that's the napkin holder again that I'll get back into. Here's some decor that has been around since the, the place opened. This is a piece of decor that has been around since it opened again. They say that if you put money into the guitar and make a wish that it will come true. This is a little placard thing that um, they put up advertisements and things inside and it's been the same ever since it opened. They changed it up a little bit but it's pretty much been the same since it opened in 1966. So this is the front page of that thing. It says, come to Don Juan's, one of the very first drive through restaurants in the country. So in this brochure project, we had to list the geography, the history, and fun things to do. So I'm going to tell you about the landscape and weather around Don Juan's. Don Juan's was built on a concrete surface. When you enter Don Juan's, you go up a ramp, then you go back on flat ground. In the front of the restaurant, there is a volcano. My Uncle Johnny, who owns it now, can turn on the volcano and make it light up. They usually turn it on in the winter to provide heat. Don Juan's is usually very bright and outside it's sunny and cheerful, but sometimes it can be cold, rainy, and gloomy. History Don Juan started in 1966 by a man from California named Don Chavario. He started Don Juan's next to the airplane plant. He owned Don Juan's and he decided to go back to California, but he only had two managers running the restaurant. One of the managers was fired and his brother Jim was hired and Jim bought the business from Don. Clyde was hired and Jim owned 100% of the business, but Clyde decided to do some other job and Jim was the owner by himself. My Uncle Johnny, when I read this to him a few days ago, wasn't sure about all of that. My Uncle Johnny started at age 15. In 1966, drive through restaurants weren't very common. Don Juan's means Mexican lover. Don Juan's has a logo with two hearts and in their, the hearts there is a boy and a girl. Their names are Don and Juanita. The restaurant's full name is Don Juan's Romantic Mexican Food because in 1966 Mexican food was very rare. Fun things to do. What would you like to do at Don Juan's? Don Juan's has an amazing venue, menu. Their french fries are fantastic. You have to try them. They have four different sizes of drinks. If you have kids that are tagging along, there are kids machines and menus. There is a love meter too. Hope you have a good meal in time at Don Juan's. So to reiterate that nothing has changed, the only machine down there that is not still there is the quarter shot, and I'm assuming it's because it has broken. But the tattoos, the candy machines, the drink sizes are all still there. This last section is where I was supposed to make up directions, so I said that you should take I-20 to Grand Prairie, Texas and find Main Street that comes off of Dalworth Street and go to East Main Street and look for a restaurant that has a sombrero at the end of the drive through So pretty much fend for yourselves. I interviewed my Uncle Johnny for Don Juan's for the virtual field trip, but he didn't want to be recorded because he was making Thanksgiving dinner. But, um, so he's worked there for 34 years. He started at 15, but he's owned it for 28 years. He met his wife, Tammy, there. All four of his kids have worked there, but two of them currently manage right now. He says, I asked him what has changed the most in his time working there, and he says nothing, but that's why people like it. I mentioned that um, quite a bit in the virtual field trip. He says that people say that remodel is a dirty word. Um, he says that if anything, it's just gotten busier over the years. There's probably, um, there's a couple new dishes that's been added. Um, there's more nostalgia now to the restaurant and that's one of the big things that 
adds to the busyness. That's why people come because of the, nost the nostalgia. Um, he says that the hot sauce and the guac are made from scratch. They make their taco meat fresh every day. And um, Courtney, who's married to one of his sons who manage my best friend, she said that the only thing that has changed about the decor and the like um, the furniture inside is that they got new napkin holders, which is why I zoomed in on them in the virtual field trip so you could see that that's the only thing that has changed on the inside of the building was they went from those silver napkin holders to the red napkin holders that they have now. So that was my interview with the owner, but he didn't want to be filmed while he was making Thanksgiving dinner. So The next location on the virtual field trip was the Gopher Warrior Bowl located at 101 High School Drive, historical marker number 56 in Grand Prairie, Texas. The Gopher Warrior Bowl was originally named just the Gopher Bowl. The name was changed on July 8th, 2004. They decided to rename it to recognize the two high schools located in Grand Prairie, which was uh, Grand Prairie High School and then we have South Grand Prairie High School located in the south part of town. TPISD approved construction for the stadium on February 13th, 1956, and the dirt work began in May 1956. Construction was completed in four and one half months and cost $200,000. On February 12, 1956, there was a news headline that read, Trustees to consider new GPHS grid, grid bowl. But other than that, there is no official naming of the Gopher Bowl other than the name just catching on. On September 28, 1956, the Gophers won their first game in their newly dedicated Gopher Bowl against Waco University High. The renovations approved on March 1st, 2003 give you the Gopher Warrior Bowl that you see in the pictures provided on this virtual field trip. The Gophers and Warriors still both use this stadium to this day on wands that you have. Tidbits, well, Don Wands is originally called the Griddle. Are you choking? You okay? The, uh, Don Wands was originally called the Griddle and uh, the mean old boys in Grand Prairie was always fighting down there and messing up, so the guy got disgusted and sold it to somebody that opened up a little Mexico, Mexican cafe. And in about 1961, I think my, no, it might have been a little later, but anyway, one of my nephews bought that place out and it's been Don Juan ever since. Mm -hmm. And then... It's, our... been, it's been handed down from the original owner to the sons. Most of the sons have worked down there at one time or another. Yeah, I think uh, Trent does a lot of it now. Yeah. Johnny does some of it, but he's kind of stepped back a little bit. Yeah. And then, do you have any anything about the Gopher Warrior Bowl? Yes. I know when we used to go for Warrior Bowl when I went to school, there wasn't no Gopher Warrior Bowl. We had a little a field up there on the hill just up from the school, by the school and uh, didn't have no lights or anything. <laughs> they had some stands, but uh, Gophers wasn't really a good football town. They, uh, in 1946, they had the best football team they've ever had. And since then, they've hardly ever went to state or, you know, other. Well, they're still not that good. Dip, be like by <laughs> district or whatever. They're still not that good. No, they're still not good. They weren't that good when I was in school either. But they got this big stadium. Yeah. Well, they built that stadium. I remember when they dug all that stadium out, there was many cubic feet of dirt removed from there to build that stadium so it would be, they could, you could use the sides of the hills or what they dug out for seats, mm -hmm. make it easier to have seat, seating in there. That was a big gully and some of the local guys uh, did that, drug that out, and built that stadium. And I used to know his name. I used to eat with him down at the cafe, but I forgot now what his name was. 